Let's start with the principles of geodesign. This term was coined a few years ago by Esri to describe the combination of geography and design. We usually think of designers in the context of buildings and architecture, but if you think about it, planners are also designers in a way. We design communities and cities and regions. Now, in that context, a plan is a kind of design, and the traditional planning process is sort of a linear design process. It starts with usually an idea, what I would call a sketch, which is something general whose details haven't been worked out yet and that you expect to change. That's the important part about a sketch. And that sketch um, gets circulated for comments with other planners, stakeholders, the public. They provide feedback, ideas for improvement, and eventually that turns into a more final plan. A designer would say you revise and render. A planner might say you draft your plan document and you write that out in carefully worded text and you usually illustrate it with maps and or 3D images. So that whole process can take months and months as you know. In geodesign it looks something like this. You have a dynamic GIS system that's helping you with the whole process. And the process itself is very iterative. The design and evaluation, the planner, the stakeholders are all tightly coupled. And the process is a series of quick, fast cycles or iterations that rapidly consider different alternatives and improve the plan for a final result. Now by doing this, you have a faster process, you have a better informed set of decisions, and you have better buy-in, at least if everything goes well. So that's the big picture on geodesign. Now let's before we move on, just trying to find geodesign a bit more carefully than I have so far. Here's a definition from Shannon McIlvaney of Esri. It's a definition I kind of like. It says, geodesign is an iterative design method that uses stakeholder input, geospatial modeling, impact simulations, and real-time feedback to facilitate holistic designs and smart decisions. Well, that's a lot, but if you read it carefully, it kind of makes sense. Let me break that down and kind of give what I think are the seven key traits of geodesign. Now, the first is it's an iterative design method, that is it goes in cycles. The second is that it emphasizes and puts a lot of weight on stakeholder input and that's stakeholders in the broadest sense of the term. It seizes on this idea of sketching, which is working with tentative ideas that you expect to change and refine. It uses geospatial modeling. It's, it's geospatially aware. That's the geo in geodesign. And it uses impact simulations or impact models to estimate the potential effects of a sketch should that sketch actually be implemented. The feedback it provides as a result of those geospatial models and impact simulations is fast and comprehensive. Fast in the sense that it's fast enough to add to a human conversation, that it supports a, a normal dialogue between people rather than say you have to wait two weeks and get a new result and then have another conversation. And it's comprehensive in the sense that it looks at a lot of different dimensions of a plan or decision, not just a single one. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, geodesign has a decision orientation. Geodesign is meant for use early in the planning process. It's good for choosing directions, setting priorities, raising awareness. It's not as good for specific details or implementation or engineering. So that's seven traits of geodesign. Hope that gives you a brief introduction to what I mean by geodesign. And next let's talk about uh, an introduction to community viz. Here is a brief introduction to CommunityViz, software for planners. The mission of CommunityViz is promoting informed, collaborative decision-making, and it's been around since 2001 under constant development ever since. It's developed by our company, Placeways, in partnership with the Orton Family Foundation. It's widely used, it's full of features, and it keeps getting better every year. If you haven't seen it before, I have a 90 second video here that should give you the general idea.
So that's the general idea on Community Viz. In a minute, we're going to start working with live Community Viz examples. If you want to follow along, you can use your own copy of Community Viz. And if you don't happen to already own a copy, you can download a free 30 day trial from the website. You will need ArcGIS Desktop as well. 